right. Thank you once again for this session. Um, that's been a wonderful session, and uh, um, thank you all for joining. Um, we will zoom straight to today's session, um, where we are going to talk about how we can leverage the power of Python to build our project, which is as on practical projects with Python. So without wasting much time, um, we have to let me give a brief presentation on um, IoT. Me coming from IoT background, I think it's, it's a, a good course to learn something small about IoT. Let's know what IoT is and then how we can use the power of, of Python to actually interface with IoT. Alright, so let me zoom in to, yeah, so when you say IoT, it's basically connecting things, right? So we have uh, devices connecting to each other. I mean, in layman's terms, you talk about yeah, I'm talking to each other, All right? So that's what it is. So IoT is a combination of hardware and software technologies that produces trillions of data through connecting multiple devices. And says we have multiple things that we can use um, to get this data. So you connect them through the cloud or so or anything, any medium of communication, right? Digital communication. Uh, to get this, to make use of um, the, the data that we receive in, all right, so to perform a specific task, all right, so here yeah, the emphasis is all more about um, data, like data has been one of the essential tools in our days, all right, so everything that we do now is concerned about data, so um, we'll probably be highlighting all our emphasis on data today. So the data we get in, data um, we storing, data we purifying, data that we are sending out. Um, how do we make good use of this data, right? And how can we use actually use this data in the sense of IoT and Python programming, all right? So almost everything is being connected to the internet um, nowadays, uh, like medium of communication like our, our boots uh, like our cars our fridges our irons probably more of the things are being connected all right so um, the, we are going to see more collection of data right so that's why ha why we have the big data all right sure so how the IoT life cycle works all right so in the first place we just collect the data we receive data Second is we communicate the data, and the third is we analyze it, and the fourth is we act on this data. So how do we collect this data? Uh, data, we collect them through devices and sensors, like tweeters and all these things that are being bonded together to receive information or um, receive the environment uh, information and then grab them so like let's take like maybe uh, a camera or something like that the camera will take a footage all right let's say a gas sensor a gas sensor will take uh, probably the senses from the outside the environment right so that's how they receive their data so the senses get in the data from probably anywhere the supermarket your office your cars your even your room right you, you get to receive data everywhere now these are some of the senses that we use in receiving the data so we got more and more of and probably this was what i was talking about the gas sensor we can use to receive gas so this will send a notification that uh, maybe they're probably a gas maybe so you you blow alarm or something like that yeah that's that's one thing that we can use and we have more and more of the senses. These are few. Uh, yeah. So the second is how we communicate this data. After the data has been collected through the environment, how are we going to send this data? How are we going to communicate this data to where it needs to be? All right. So you see data 
that we get through the senses and everything they need to get to where it can be processed now how do we get this data to be processed so we have more and more of the platform that we can use this data or like the, as a medium of communication and use this data so we have um, Google, Google platforms cloud platforms and we have maybe Amazon like there are tons of them so through network connectivities and then uh, other medium of communication right? so we get to receive this data so we have data centers being stored this data and pass it as a medium of communication even in your home network like your Wi-Fi or MiFi or your Bluetooth whatever it is as a medium of communication you can use it so that, these are some of the use cases even your 2G uh, your 2G can use it as a medium of communication all right so after we collect and then receive this data we need to make use of it that's when we analyze this data we filter it we we have to i mean make meanings of this data we just we, we just we just don't receive this data and then just store it for whatever reason no we have to make meaningful usage of it so that's how we also build projects based on this data uh, we got to make decisions based on this data and we have to um, apply some certain knowledge so um, this data in uh, in IoT we have to maybe push a button or do certain all kinds of um, thing that um, the data that has been received can be um, used uh, in efficient way all right so we have things that we can use in making decisions we have the blink we have the things io we have the thing speak and probably there are many of them these are few yeah. and after that we have received this data we need to act and uh, this acting comes in a way that we can store this data we can pass this data back we can pass this data from everywhere we can use this data so in maybe a smart irrigation system um, if your sensor says that there is low moisture you have to water the soil have to fertile the soil so you have to get an interface that will allow you to send command back to the whatever device that you're using then it just um, water the area or do something perform a, a tax all right so that's how so after you receive the data the next thing that you will do is that you act on that data and this is how you get many many of the applications that you can use to act on the data that you have received so it's not basically on maybe doing anything but you can push just a button and it will work for example leaving your iron on and you just left the house you forget your iron uh, you can't come back home and then just turn off your iron you can use this um, medium of communications to just be in your office just turn off your iron with a click of a button so that's how it also works so it can be used in uh, probably many use cases and you can incorporate AI into it and it will just work perfectly for you so let me end that here um, and just continue all right so um, how can we use Python and leverage the power of Python to I mean achieve this whole thing that we saw so one thing is let's just zoom in you set up your virtual environment as we learned the other time if you um, have really forgotten you need to check back to the previous video and then after setting up you just open your Jupyter notebook and that's what exactly I did here so when you open your Jupyter notebook it will just give you an interface um, as we did on the previous session so um, I, I'm, I'm going to highlight on what we did um, the other time uh, so we just did a print statement and then we just did the variables taking the placeholders and we did functions 
um, performing some tasks for us and then knowing the scopes that we can do there are pretty much bigger things that you can achieve here and there are things that can go on here but to keep it simple and then uh, precise we did it that way and we got to know about the conditional statements where you take condition based on circumstances that are really happening and we did the uh, loops loops are where you have um you can recycle um, something you can make something recycle without you doing any extra work yeah and we did a classes where you got a container and a container will also uh, contain some tools that you can use for future and so that's how we get to know that um, the OS is also being built behind the scene using this um, classes and probably many of the things so we did a pretty small um, guess game where we use the random um, a, a random function from the Python library and we just did a game and then we just also read read a file from our local storage uh, which, uh, which is here this the file was here we read the PDF file and then we just print out the file so you can pretty add maybe an IO voice uh, sorry AI voice to this then um, it will just read the file for you so that's what we did the other day and today what you're going to do is leveraging on that idea we are going to uh, continue just with this and what we're going to do is we just important time we are just going to move on with some principles all right so uh, we got to follow and so this is time from the python package or module that you can just import it it's just built in you can use it so this time helps you to delay for some seconds in execution you know when python when you're executing um, it reads from the first to down and uh, without any delay so you can uh, just um, delay for some seconds so let's just use this uh, to check for some delays and see how this thing works so I'll first power on my uh, time let me just run this you see that it just came off no delays all right so when i come back here and just do it again you see that this comes first i delay for some seconds and you see um, this thing pops up again so that's how it also works you can delay for some seconds now what you're gonna see again is um, list and dictionaries where you can use this to store data and store information about certain things certain programs or anything pretty anything so you we got to know from other sessions that they have the integers, they have strings, more of the data types that you can use for lists, and it's pretty mutable. You can iterate through it uh, to find the value that you want, and it's it's an index base, right? It's an index base, and dictionaries are like a key value pairs that you match this, and it, the value is this. Yeah, so pretty much simple, and then. Um, we, we design something like a database where you can store your information about a certain person, locality and everything. So when you print this, we get this. So this is the user data that we get from our dictionary. Now even this dictionary, you can pass it as a, uh, as a property or as, um, as a value to our list. So here is, we initialize a list with an empty array. You can pretty add, uh, add much or uh, add some element to it but we are going it empty and here we are just using the attribute of a list attribute of a list we have more and more of them one is append which append means that you can we are appending it we are pushing it <coughs> sorry sorry we are pushing the data to the empty array so that's how it works so let's push the data to the empty array and see how that also works so let's run this and let's run this one 
so you see that we push data to the array now you see some square brackets in here which means that uh, it's a list all right so and when you when you get here you see that it's an it's a bracket um sorry it's a curly brace which means that it's a visionary all right so we have pushed the data into our list now we want to push another data into our list but now we don't want to add it to our list but we want to update the first one so uh, dictionary also has an attribute called update which is used to update the previous uh, value there are more and more of the um, attributes that you can use one is the update you can have the pop they are pretty much you can check the documentation for more and um, so yeah we can push this let's run it yeah now you see that we have the ID being pushed to the element and now you see that we have none here this none is that we pushing this one to the array should have two elements in the array but since that we are just updating the first one it will update the first one and it will return a non value to the second index all right so that's how it works so we can pretty use that idea coming here so there has been some uh debates about our list and uh, dictionaries which one works faster so I did this just more just to um, see which one works faster. So we use the time that we imported earlier and we just the first time of execution and the last time of execution and we de um, we deducted the first time from the last time to get the actual time it took for the execution and here for dictionary we got it's point seven seven and then the list we got um, 9.29 which is dictionary is more faster than list now holding on to data we we can bring this what we learned from the list and dictionary right into machine learning and and then so machine learning and um, data science really helps a lot when it comes to data using of this data and making good use of the data so um there are tons of libraries and the most known one are the numpy pandas macro labs and they are pretty much you can check it out so we use this to analyze data we visualize data and perform certain statistics and it's, it's pretty much like as we knew we know from the computer science people <laughs> so um just like that we can have so they call it data set you hear much from them and we want to find push something to our list so we use a for loop and then uh, we use a range of four so for the four is like um, i need four values now you know that the index is start from zero so we're pretty much aware of that from the beginning so let's print it out and see um yeah sorry i think i had an error yeah i think this is the error yeah so you see you get four values right here but you know indexes works with uh, starting from zero are uh, there so we need four values but it start from zero to that's why we got zero to three all right let's move on and then we just want to update the third value or the third uh, portion which is this one the third portion is the last one don't confuse yourself and say oh the third portion here is the is the third one one two three don't count it from one two three like just like that the third portion is a fourth value so that's how you can I uh, use this um, um, yeah, array or list yeah, as in Python. So let's try to use the Maplolib. And we have a package also called the MPO Cyberpunk. You can also check it out. We can use to visualize our data and make manipulations to our data. Pretty much something 
right and we just import it and just add in add in some values right from here and just use the values on our second as is and yes we just plot it and show so this is how the value looks let me zoom it out and we get pretty much understand what this is going on so you see we get one three so one three nine four and then two one and one all right so that's how we do it. so you can use this and then just plot your graph getting in the data this is how you can use the data all right so it all is about data today all right so how can we also get user data user data you can pretty much use the input uh, method from python uh, yeah and you can run this function the fibonacci um, sequence where you get data and you generate um, the figures for the data right so this one we use the if statement that pretty much you can use any how you want it all right so that's how we pretty much get this um, for the gate right here so you can use this and just pass it to your uh, multiple lip and then it will just work for you fine so how are we going to use this data in iot so interfacing with the board um, we have many many boards that uh, we use from the raspberry pi uh, to the arduinos to the nanos and pretty much there are many of the uh, boards but you know that um, the boards they don't understand the human readable codes like this one they don't understand so what we do is we just pass in some commands so that they will understand what we are talking about so we just compile it into a machine readable code so that they will also understand so we have a library called serial um they are pretty another ones but serial also is one of the popular ones that we use to um, pass um Python into uh, machine readable code. So, you know, they also work in bytes, all right? So the byte is like uh, the ma what the machines understand, right? It's like the sending codes through the pipelines in their boards, all right? That's how it is. So you can read more about it, but it's just pretty entertaining to know, all right? So just know that they understand zeros and ones, all right? so it's like just like that all right so we just import serial and just we need to i mean go well, the library is called pi serial so and they use the import serial for this yeah. so we just pass in our uh, variable as arduino and just pass in the serial to serial and we open a port now you need you know that in communicating with arduino boards you need some port you need some wires to connect to your computer and then just connect to the board so this is how we open the serial boards and we use the time as you saw earlier to delay for some seconds and then just flash it out and see that everything is working and then so from here we can get a user input this is what we call the data now we are getting input from the data um, the user to decide on the occasion so you can have occasions but um when you get user uh, data uh, use information from the user then we get to act on that data you know bots are just dead they can't decide on their own unless we pass information to them like all the computer boards they are dead they can't do anything pretty anything unless we command them to do something for us so let's say we we have a state that the um our led or light bulb or anything is off i hope you have all read about um we did electronics from the beginning in our elementary schools where we got um a battery and then we we do some wires and we do some switch and then we do some bulb when you press on the switch and it comes on and yeah so that's how it is so the user will be the switch right here so that's how it works so here we are using the if statement to just get the user input and then compare it to one so what they understand it to one and then the zero so this one will just check if it's one and this one just check if it's zero so the highs and then the lows um will pretty determined sometimes you might see them using the 
H and then the L. You know, as computer um, programmers by us, they will just use it. So that's how it also works here. So this is how you turn the human readable codes to the uh, machine readable codes. So this one here just turns it to the machine readable codes, the B1. So the B1 right here is telling the, the board that, yeah, I'm commanding you to turn off the LED or turn on the LED. So they, that's how they pretty much determine it. So it passes to over the serial port. Now the port that you connected from here. Now this information is going to pass on from the computer or anything that you're pretty using. Nowadays you can even send information through your phone. All right. So you got to make decisions on the data that you receive. So maybe you have received the data from your uh, your your home or anything like that. When you press zero, it's going to act and turn off the uh, maybe your light or your fridge or anything. And we turn high, then uh, or one, then it just turn on your device for you. So. This is pretty uh, how you can use information or data and pretty determine the action that um, you want your device to um, do for you. So I'll be brief on this. Um, we will be taking any questions or anything and probably we'll end this session. Thank you.